We're back talking thoroughbred horse racing on the new ProLine TV YouTube channel. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Greg DePama. Joining me, of course, is John Hardoon from the Rigas and Sheets. How's it going, John? Good, 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 good. Happy Thanksgiving to you and all the listeners as well. Absolutely. This is a uh, day after Thanksgiving, so we are uh, still working because thoroughbred racing never stops. So <laughs> when are they off? Are they off like one day a year? No, that well, Santa Anita closes down like uh, 10 days before Christmas. Uh, Naira and uh, Aqueduct will probably close the last week of the year. So we have some a little break coming up. But then you have Oaklawn starting and Gulfstream. So not full okay. days off, but a few tracks take some time off. Yeah, next week is, isn't going to be too bad either. I know there are a couple of races that uh, are on tap. So uh, we'll definitely have something for next week. And then, uh, again, we'll let you know as soon as we can. If we have uh, – if there's going to be another week off uh, between now and end of the year based on the fact there just aren't any good races, we'll let you know. Uh, next week, uh, matter of fact, looking at it, it's a big, uh, big day at Aqueduct next Saturday. Uh, you've got uh, three grade twos, including the Cigar Mile and the Remsen. So – those are another... serious races. What are they? Those are serious races. Okay, there you go. So it's uh, even though it's uh, December next week, uh, we are going to still be here talking about some really good racing. we got some really good racing uh, to talk about on the show today. Tomorrow at Del Mar, uh, we've got a couple of uh, nice races, very good wagering races, uh, races seven and nine. And that is the Sea Biscuit and the Hollywood Derby. Big fields at Del Mar. How about that? Big fields and terrific betting races. You really picked out two terrific races for the show today, Greg. So hopefully we're right because uh, hopefully <laughs> the favorites in both of those races extremely vulnerable, in my opinion. And uh, I think we have a shot to make some money. Yeah, and also want to give a, a, a good luck shout out to uh, Chad, uh, who has his horse Filoso running in Churchill Downs on Saturday, uh, and that is going to be race 11, the Kentucky Jockey Club Stakes. It's a grade two. Uh, so these, this is a two-year-old. He's got Filoso. We've talked about him on this uh, show before. Uh, we didn't have a chance to talk to him on his last race because that's when I was going through my hurricane uh, 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 tribulations. Um, but anyway, hopefully he'll rebound from that uh, poor showing in the grade one race at Keeneland. It this wasn't – it wasn't that bad a race. He finished third. And the good, the good thing about this horse is he's supposed to get better with distance. So that's what Chad was saying since he was a baby. Now he's going to get his opportunity to show it. And uh, I think you get derby points for this race as well. So it's an important race all around. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he made another forward move. He has a shot certainly to hit the board. Yep, he's a closer. So hopefully he'll get a fast pace out there. Uh, Jonathan's way uh, is is a good horse, so I believe that's the favorite. And well, but something happened to Jonathan's way last race in, yeah. uh, in the Breeders' Cup. Uh, he never showed up. Was it the two turns? Last time was the first time he won two turns. Maybe he doesn't want to go that far. He had no excuse, really. And Saturday's race is two turns as well. So it's going to be an interesting race there. Actually, I like a little bit of a price horse, if you want me to give it out to the sure. listeners. Gladly will. Uh, and the other, go ahead. Uh, what race was it? The uh, uh, that's race 11. Yeah, okay. So, in that race, the interesting horse to me was the four Dapper Moon, a uh, lightly raced horse from the Dallas Stewart Barn. Only four career starts, but he is getting better. He has a race at Churchill last time out around two turns, and that's the situation here. He's going to have uh, certainly a conditioning edge because his last two races have both been around two turns, and he is getting better. He's a price horse in the race that I would be very interested in playing, the Ford Dapper Moon. There you go. We threw in another freebie. Yeah, there you go. Uh, the only thing that uh, hopefully will work in, in Chad's favor is the fact that uh, Dapper Moon um, – Ran, uh, let's see, he's got 18 15, 18 15, and he ran a race just well, it's, it's actually should be about a month, so that's actually not yeah, that. off of that line. He can make a forward move, yeah. And I think he's um, going to do it, and he's going to be the value, he's going to be the you know, the value in the race. All right, so there you go, that's going to go off about quarter to six on Saturday, so check it out. 
Chad's a, a Feloso horse there that we're keeping our fingers crossed on, the two-year-old. So uh, we'll see how uh, he fares. Okay, so uh, don't forget we're going to have a, a free pick. And by the way, I believe this is the last free pick. This is it for Patreon. So uh, that doesn't mean that we're going away on Patreon. Again, if you want to uh, maintain your membership on Patreon, it's only $5 a month. Uh, and we will uh, add uh, some sort of programming there. Uh, trust trust me. If we see that there's members there, we'll, we'll figure out something because um, we're not going away with that. That's something that we want to keep for the long term. Uh, but uh, that'll be it. And then once we hit December, uh, everything is basically going to be mostly here on YouTube. And uh, we're going to, of course, be moving everything over to the new channel, ProLine TV, which is going to have everything on it. So you want to subscribe to ProLine TV because of the fact that, I mean, we're going to be talking. Matter of fact, I got an F1, a Formula One show I got to do in about an hour that we're posting on the channel. Football, NFL, college, NASCAR, golf, uh, everything in sports, NBA, college basketball, hockey. So that's why we're going to really hope to be part how, of that. How do you group. find that? How do you find that? Because people are, not everyone's as computer savvy as other people, especially voice players. I'm going to put a link in the description. So we'll put it in two different areas. So it'll be on the comment section and it'll also be in the, in the description area. And uh, if you just want to find it out, it's ProLine TV. That's it. ProLine, P-R-O-L-I-N-E TV. So there you go. All right. Race seven, Sea Biscuit handicap, two hundred thousand dollars, three year olds and up. This will go off about six thirty. So hey, you can do the uh, Churchill race we just talked about. Hopefully Chad wins, and you got a half hour to get ready for this one or so. Uh, anyway, this has got three three morning line favorites up there: the seven, the three, and the ten. John, and as you said, at least two of the three are vulnerable. Uh, the 10 might be the interesting one out of the three, but uh, just quickly go over those. Or actually, let's just go over those. So we'll start in, uh, in order. Uh, SEAL Team, the 7-2 to two shot, has just one race since November, and that was a nine last month, and he had never run. That's a new four-point top. So right there, and, and he didn't race very well either. That was a, He didn't have a good race. Uh, but anyway, that seems a little bit you know tricky to me, especially for a morning line favorite. Well, he did have a good race because he ran a nine, which was five or six points faster than he's ever run before. He may not have had a good race, uh, you know, if you look in the form where he ran fifth. But if you're looking at sheets, he ran well. Problem with this horse is where is he going off the nine? He's seven to two. It's one number. He would have to repeat it to possibly get a, ch a chance in here. There are horses with that are much longer prices that have consistently run faster numbers. So I don't really want SEAL team. Same thing goes for the seven, redistricting. That's a uh, Chad Brown horse shipping in from New York to run at uh, Del Mar. Usually those horses have success uh, shipping in from the East Coast. But that being said, at three to one, he's slow. He's never even run a, a single digit. The best yeah. he's ever run is an eleven. He did have trouble last time out, and it's Chad Brown and Flavian Pratt, so obviously they can move forward. But there is no edge in playing this horse at three to one. Yeah, matter of fact, he had he, the October race last month was his first race since December at Del Mar when he ran in the Hollywood Derby, which we're going to talk about next. Something happened to him there, and that made him miss all that time. And then he came back and he ran at eleven, which I guess is just okay. Something wrong with that. But at three to one, there, I mean, why would we risk it at that number? Not so. when you have horses with seven, eights, and nines in the race. Yeah. You, know, you don't want that horse. And he's going to be short because of the connections. Yes. Jack Brown and Flavian Pratt, everybody bets those guys. So there you go. But again, uh, just like you, you, you're you, off to say, I mean, could he win? Yes, he could, definitely. Uh, but the fact is, uh, it is not a good... Um, no edge in playing that horse. No horse. edge. Uh, now the 10... That's different. Al Menderes, the four to one shot with Red Ortiz Jr. on board because you like the fact that he's been, he's got wins at Del Mar. He's one for one at the distance. And in the four races this year, they're all single digits, including his last two stops at Del Mar when he ran a couple of nines. Yeah, the interesting thing is Pratt rode him last time out and opts for the seven horse. Well, I guess that's because it's Chad Brown. That's why he's switching. But the line is really nice on the 10. He's really never done anything wrong. Nine, nine, seven. Uh, the only thing about him is that he is breaking from a tough post, the outside post going a mile and a 16th at Del Mar. Not an optimum uh, post position. But that being said, 
I would, I'm going to include him for sure with whoever I decide to key, but I'm not keying off of him because I think we have better options at bigger prices. All right. Well, let's start at the top. You got fast buck, a 20 to one long shot. That um, is, is also not the worst idea in the world to hit the, to hit the board because he's got a grade one win. That was last May running an eight. And this year he does have two nines, including a nine his last time out. Um, is this a long shot uh, that you want to consider? No. He's six years old. He's got 14 lifetime starts, and he's never been long. So he's never been beyond six and a half for a long Saturday. He's a mile and a 16th. When you get a horse that hits the age of six and he's never been two turns, well, you know, unless he's a million to one, I really don't want him. All right. Now, number two, Sumter. Uh, this looks like a good play. At eight to one, you have Mike Smith on board, who was on board the last time, and it looks like it might have been the first time with this horse, and and got a win. So he's going to go two for two, hopefully. Now he ran a ten in this race last year. Uh, he was actually going wire to wire from the pole position, but then he faded down the stretch and finished fourth. So he and he ran a ten in that race, which isn't bad. Now since then. If you look at it, the very next race you ran a 10 in January, and then all the other races were seven, eight, and nines. This horse is fine. As a matter of fact, the regular listeners of this show know we gave this horse out the last time he ran uh, when he got his first win in a long time. And uh, we did give him out. I think he paid $10 and change that day. Okay. There's nothing wrong with this horse. He's eight to one. I'm certainly using him. The th uh, three we talked about. Now, the four, now, this is like that classic. Sheets versus uh, form because you're looking and you're going, wait a second, why is this horse 15 to 1 when if you look at his racing pretty much from the beginning of his career all the way through, or at least on the even on the form, if you look at January 23 through November uh, of a couple weeks ago, uh, he's done nothing wrong. He's kind of improved each time on these uh, turf races. Uh, matter of fact, his last two races were a nine and a seven. Both were wins. That's pretty impressive co coming off a seven at Del Mar. Uh, but if you look at it, you're going, oh, I see. Okay, he's racing a lot of optional claiming races, and he's going up against big-time horses. So is that what we're dealing with here? Is that why this horse is 15 to one? And, yeah. and the fact he's coming off a two-week uh, layoff only? He's, he's 15 to one for the reasons you said. People think he's cheap and doesn't belong with these horses. The problem, though, he does belong with these horses. The problem is he doesn't belong with these horses Saturday because he's coming off of a big race just two weeks ago, and he looks like he has to react off of it. You know, he, if he had a little more time, I would really like this horse, but he doesn't. So for that reason, the fact that he's back on a quick turnaround, it's the reason I'm playing against him. Yeah, and, and we would definitely, especially at 15 to 1, not say uh, to not wager on this horse if you're thinking of doing it, especially. We don't, we don't tell anyone not to wager on any horse. If they're, no. they're only here to get ideas. I mean, that, obviously, you bet your opinion, opinion. It's your money, you know, so put up uh, what – back your own opinion before you back anyone else's is the way I look at it. That's it. All right. Now the five is another interesting long shot at 15 to one astronomer because astronomer at Del Mar in July ran a five. Now he's been kind of um, up and down this year, seven in April, then a 13, then the five at Del Mar, then the 11, the next race, then back to a nine. Uh, but you're getting 15 to one on a horse that ran a five just a few months ago. Yeah, I'm using this horse for sure. Um, the 13 was off the top of the 7. The 11 was off the top of the 5. So both of those races he, he expected to bounce. He rebounded a little last time running the 9. Now he's got plenty of time. Um, he's an absolute must-use on my tickets. Okay, the 6 is me, Hermano Ramon. And uh, this is a horse that if you look at the sheets, you're like, okay, they're, they're pretty nice. Uh, you know, he's gone up from March uh, through uh, of last year through October last month, uh, where he ran a bunch of 15s to end last year. Took some time off. Uh, matter of fact, he did not race from June to August. Came back at Del Mar at this distance and ran an 11. Then he improved to a 9 in the next race, which is exactly what you want to see. But what really jumps off the screen to me is, is you got an 11 and a 9 this year, which is pretty compatible to the rest of the horses. And you've got the hottest trainer in the meet. I mean, this guy, Mark Ladd, has gone just on fire. 
uh, along with maybe the hottest jockey in the meet. So I'm definitely using this horse. Well, he certainly has a shot, and you make good points. Markelot has absolutely been on fire, and uh, Hector Barrios is riding that turf course as good as anybody else. Listen, I had him, but how many horses could I use underneath? That's the problem. Uh, if he's long enough, obviously, if he's anywhere near this price, you could use him. All right. So next up, we have a Easter. And there's another interesting uh, good horse to take a look at at eight to one, because if you look all the way back to July of last year, everything is single digit sheet numbers from a seven. I mean, and, and, and everything's consistent from sevens to eights to nines. Uh, the only thing is, and he gets a couple of grade two wins too. Uh, by the way, in the three races at this distance, he has a seven, a seven and a nine. That's also very good. Two sevens. Um, the only thing is, is what's gone on in the last three races. I'm, I, you know, I'm not sure what's happened there result wise, but sheet number wise, this is a must play, isn't it? This is my key in the race. I mean, he never runs a bad race. Uh, true, he hasn't gotten back to the seven in his last three races, but I think he's going to run it. He never runs a bad race. Uh, he's eight to one. You're getting Antonio for a Sue. Uh, there's no question. This is the horse that I'm betting. Uh, the nine uh, did run an eight in July, but besides that, looks uh, slow. I don't like them. And uh, again, we talked about the 10. And then the 11 and the 12 also look slow. Yeah, they don't belong. All right. Here, here's the way I'm playing it. I'm using Easter as my key and exact. As I'm certainly using the two Sumter, the five Astronomer. You could use uh, your six Mi Hermano and the 10. Eight with the two, five, six, ten, plenty of room. Reverse those exactors as well. If the eight is anywhere near the price of eight to one, you want to make some sort of one bit. I'm going to go ahead and take the six. So I'm going to go. I like uh, hot trainers and jocks and stuff. Well, it's not a bad way to play, but go ahead. Six. Yeah. And, and then I, I obviously I liked every other, all those other horses you talked about. So you can put uh, all the other horses in my exactors as well. I'll go six on top. You've got eight on top over two, five, six, and 10. Okay. So that is race number seven at Del Mar. Now we're going to talk about race number nine. And this is the big race of the weekend. And that is the Hollywood Derby. Mile and an eighth. This is a $300,000 purse for three-year-olds. This is going to go off about 7.30 Eastern. Keep that in mind. There's only one uh, top favorite in the race, morning line favorite, and that's the four. Carson's run. It's a three to one shot with two grade one wins coming off a grade three win at Aqueduct in October. And the line is, is really solid because he just keeps getting better from a 21 last July, all the way up to a nine. And back, matter of fact, back to back nines in back to back grade three races. This horse also ran in the Breeders' Cup juvenile turf races. You can see won the summer stakes. That's a grade one, as we mentioned. Also uh, won a grade one race at Saratoga. What do you think about the morning line favorite, Carson's run? He's okay, but he's not. you can't bet him. You could use him, but there's just too many juicy horses at big prices that you should keep before you, you – I mean, again, Carson's run could certainly win. Dylan Davis comes in to ride. Dylan Davis has ridden this horse in uh, – what, how many, two, two of his last three races, winning both of them last time out and two starts back, both times Dylan Davis was aboard. But at three to one, I, I have to try to beat him. Yeah, matter of fact, on the forum, he's got four wins on the horse. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, Carson's run, definitely we can see why he's the favorite. Let's go around the rest of the field. Uh, the one is stay hot, an eight to one shot. Um, you know, I was looking at the sheet numbers, of course, and I don't see anything special. I was wondering why he was eight to one. And then I realized, all right, well, you know, if you look at it, you know, he's got a, he's been very strong as far as winning races and finishing second in, in even in these uh, grade two races. Um, but I think there are other options. He does look pretty good at Del Mar. Uh, what about the one stay hot? He's what we call reverse buried. He looks good in the form, but not on the sheets. I mean, he's yeah. never run a single digit. Uh, I don't like this horse at all. And he gets bet every week. Last week, he went off the favorite when he finished second, or last time he ran, I should say. I, I, I'm i beating this, so I don't like this horse at all. Okay. The two is Rothschild. And we all uh, immediately, we have an interesting long shot. Uh, Pratt uh, gets on board. So that's an instant upgrade. And uh, what you like here is the fact that 
in the three previous races before the 15 last time out, he ran a nine and eight and a 10. And again, you got Pratt now at 15 to one. This is my top selection. I love this horse. To be a success in horse racing and gambling, you have to be willing to forgive and forget. Last time out, we loved this horse and he was horrible. He didn't run a step. But if you look at the internal fractions that day, and he had a bad ride, uh, they went slow. He had no pace to close into. That's why you see the P in front of the 15. I'm willing to absolutely draw a line through that race. And then I go back to the two previous races, the nine and the eight. If he runs either one of those, he's got a hell of a shot of winning. And I love the rider switch today to Pratt. And I love the 15 to one on the morning line. So again, I'm willing to forgive and forget the last race. And if you go back to his two and three starts back, either one of those two races puts him right there. The price is right. And the jockey will make the difference here. All right. Rothschild, 15 to one. We'll see if we get 15 to one since it's Pratt on board, but hopefully we will. All right. Next up, uh, we got a slow horse, correct? The three. He's slow, but, 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 but. You know, I wish you didn't need a nine or an eight to win this race, because if you look at this race last year, he ran a 16, his only turf race. And at that point in his career, he was running 18s and 22s. So when he hit the grass, look at the big jump up. Now as a three-year-old, she's so much better. She's running 13. So if she makes that same improvement on Saturday that she did last year when she tried the grass for the first time, well, that puts her in the 10 and 11 range. Just an idea, maybe somewhere in the bottom of your tries or supers at a huge price. All right. Well, the, the jockey that's on board is the same one that uh, didn't do a good job with Rothschild last time out, but that's just a coincidence. This guy's a good rider. He's yeah, it's a coincidence. At, he rides at, uh, he rides at uh, Woodbine most of the year. Listen, Rothschild last time out didn't matter who was on him. The horse yeah. did not run. Again, draw a line through it. He had a bad day at the office. All right. Well, we'll see. Does that mean that you're going to – you're just going to – Forget about the three, and or you're gonna pray. Ah, you know, I'll throw two bucks on him at least to make sure if he yeah. wins, I got something. Well, all right, whatever. All right. <laughs> Here comes uh, we did the four. All right, the five king of Gosford, a five to one shot with a red Ortiz Jr. on board, coming off a win. Uh, this horse, as a matter of fact, has got four wins in his last seven, eight starts or so. If you look at the sheet numbers, though, of course, he's coming off a nine at Del Mar in the win. That was with Pratt on board. He's got another good one on board in a red Ortiz Jr. Um, he's five to one. No, it's a little bit of a short price. But he's never done anything wrong. He ran tens earlier this year. He ran a 12 first time distance at Del Mar three starts back. Time off 11, time off nine. So he's never gone backwards. And now he's got some more time off. I am using this horse underneath. Okay. Next up is six. Formidable man. Three for three at Del Mar. Two for three at this distance. But he only has one single digit. That was the nine at Del Mar. A couple of starts back. He's got back-to-back -back wins. Uh, what about formidable man uh, at, a, at close to five to one? Not at nine to two. I think the price is too short. Yeah. Yeah, just one single digit. And, and surrounded by 14s, 13s, yeah. 18s. Yeah. Uh, the seven is Donegal Momentum, a six to one shot with Castellano on board. And he's got three wins and five starts. He went wire to wire in his win the last time out, ran an 11. He doesn't have any single digits yet. He does have four 11s. Yeah, but he's not long enough. He's only six to one, and he would need to run a nine or better. So uh, I'm not a, interested. A Titalan is eight to one, the eight. Uh, Sheriffs is the trainer, and yeah. this horse looks slow. Uh, I, this was the horse that I was wondering. Why is this horse eight to one when he's run 14s and 16s? Because he won the Twilight Derby last time out at Santa Anita on the turf, which was a grade two stake, but he yeah. won it with a slow number. He's reverse buried. I don't want him. The next horse, the nine, also looks slow. Yes. Okay. Let me get over here. Stuck my pages. Got so many pages here in this race. Well, you, got, you picked races with full fields. That's good. 
All right, the 10 uh, also looks low. Uh, even though he's coming off three 11s and four 11s in his last five, which is better than some of these other horses, to tell you the truth. But And he's and he's 30 to 1. The problem with these horses, the rest of the field, actually, they're all outposted, post 10, post 11, post 12, post 13. They don't have a single digit. How are they supposed to get it? Yeah, that was pretty much it. I didn't really – I didn't really – put a marker on most of these because there was really nothing, you know, that most of them are slow and they're outside. Exactly. I guess out of all the ones that are outside though, the 10 looks like the better one. He does. But again, uh, there are faster horses drawn inside. Listen, if he's long enough, throw him in. Yeah. So, you know, actually the 10 and the, I'm going write, to write a note here, the three and the 10 long shots. Bombs. Yeah. Why not? All right. So there you go. So you got the two. That's you. Rothschild. Yes, exact is over the four, the five, and the seven. And obviously, you could throw in those other big ones for a couple of dollars. But I, I'm king the two Rothschild. If I get anywhere over an eight to one, I'll be betting this horse to win as well. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to go ahead then and I'm going to do the four, but I'm going to do the long shots. Obviously, I'm doing Rothschild for sure. And I'm, I'm going to throw in those long shots. I'm going to do four over two, three, and 10. There you go. So um, anyway, that is it for our YouTubers. And John gave you a bonus pick as well. Um, and Hit, that, subscribe. What was that? Hit subscribe. Hit subscribe, uh, both for here at Proline TV. And again, we're, we're going to keep uh, uh, posting on our horse racing channel uh, because we want to keep reminding you to subscribe there as well. Uh, and uh, hey, you know what? We, we've got a nice horse racing channel. We just want to keep there. So uh, what we'll do is, is we'll post these shows uh, early and then maybe on race day, I'll post them in, on the horse racing channel for a little bit. So anyway, we're out of here on YouTube. Uh, next up is our Patreon free pick. So uh, we'll see everybody next week when we have some really good racing from Aqueduct. All right. So here we go. Uh, we are ready to give that free pick out. Uh, John, you've got another race from Del Mar. You got race number three, correct? Yes, sir. All right, what do you got for us? I like the two horse in here, lottery pick, a five-year-old gelding for the Peter Yurton barn, first time Flavian Pratt. This is horses on the improve. His grass races have really gotten good. He's five to one on the morning line. Let's play exact is with number three, Sinos, number seven, Oscar Joy, and number eleven on the whim. Two with the three, seven, eleven, come back, reverse them as well. All right. And what, what are the odds on the two? The two is five to one. The three is 10 to one. The seven is 10 to one. And the 11 is actually the morning line favorite of three to one. All but right. So race, race number three at Del Mar. And again, that is a mile turf race that'll go off about 430 Eastern. Uh, take a look at the two lottery pick with Flavian Pratt on board. John, appreciate it as always. Uh, again, uh, you're going to have some leftovers? Yeah, lunch, I guess. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Have we'll a see great day. Yeah, we'll see everybody next week. Thanks, Greg. Stay well and be safe.